Hi everybody, my name is Brennan and I'm from the United States. This is my dog Stitch. And as you may have guessed, not only am I from the United States, but I'm actually in the United States right now. That's because I got deported from China. Now you're probably wondering like, oh my God, what did you do? How could you be deported? And I'm here to break the bad news to you that actually the deportation story itself isn't that exciting, but what happened on the plane back to the United States is quite interesting. Long story short, ever since I got back to China in February, that's February 2021 in case you're watching this in the future, I have been dealing with visa issues, mainly because, well, you know, it would be easy to put the blame on my company for not knowing what they were doing, but at the end of the day, I think really it's my responsibility for not having researched well enough what I needed to do before I left the United States to China. And that really came to bite me in the butt because I needed something called a non-criminal record. Now, it's very easy to get it done in the United States, probably to get it done within a few days, but being abroad, it's super difficult to get it done, and it was taking me weeks and weeks and weeks to get that taken care of. I ended up having to be on a humanitarian visa for about two months, and after those two months were finished, I went to extend my visa one more time, but people at immigration services told me, sorry, you've already been here on a humanitarian visa for two months, we can't help you, you need to leave China. Now, this may not sound that bad, but keep in mind that I was told this on a Thursday, and my visa expired on Sunday. So, just in a few days, I had to quit all my jobs, I had to buy a plane ticket, I had to pay about $2,500 for my ticket back to the United States. Anyway, the real story happened on the flight from Shanghai to San Francisco. So I get to my seat in the second to last row of the airplane. The flight was about 10% full, which means there was only one person per row and we all had about two or three rows in between each person, which was so nice. And there's this white guy sitting in front of me about two rows. Let's name him Connor. He just keeps looking back and looking back and looking back at me. And finally, he asks me, so you headed to San Francisco? And, you know, in my mind, I'm thinking like, well, <laughs> aren't we all headed to San Francisco? So we started to talk about why we were leaving China. And as a joke, I said to him, ha ha ha, I bet you're being deported because, you know, that's the situation I was in. And in all seriousness, he goes, how did you know? And I was like, well, to be honest, flights are so expensive from China to the United States right now that it makes sense that one of the only reasons you would leave is that if you were either A, moving, or B, being forced by the government to go back to the United States. So, and then the floodgates opened. It turned out that Connor had been in a car accident about two years prior and then he was sent to a Chinese prison for about a year and a half. He had just gotten out of jail that day and they had taken him literally from the prison to the airport to be sent back to the United States. All he had on him was the clothes on his back, about $70 in cash in Chinese money, I think, three books and his passport. That's all. After hearing all of this, I was like, I mean, I immediately started thinking of ways that I could help this guy because when he got back to the United States, he didn't have a phone, he barely had any money, and he still needed to go all the way to Texas. You know, full disclosure, I guess, I had lived in San Francisco for about five months during 2020, so I knew that the city of San Francisco have a lot of resources for people who are in situations like his. And, you know, I'm a pretty direct person, so I asked if I could help. He said, yeah, it was fine. And I said, okay, well, to be frank, you're homeless and there are lots of resources available in San Francisco and in the Bay Area for people who are in situations like you. You have $70 right now, that's not gonna get you very far in San Francisco. We talked for a while about his, oh, oh my God, I forgot to mention that he has a Chinese fiance who he wasn't able to talk to most of the time that he was in prison. And also on top of that, went to the prison to pick him up and to see him when he got out, but didn't even get the chance to see him because he was taken by the authorities from the prison to the airport. His fiance didn't know where he was, if he was being deported back to the United States or not. It was a mess. When we got to San Francisco, I ended up using my phone to email his dad that he had arrived safely in the United States. I added his fiance on WeChat. I found the nearest branch of his bank so he could withdraw money and buy his next flight to Texas because the Chinese government only paid for his flight to San Francisco. And also I called different homeless shelters around the city for him to be able to stay at. Now, after we got out of customs, my mom was arriving to the airport quite quickly. So I only had a few minutes to get all this stuff done. If any of you have been to 
the San Francisco Bay Area and try to get from the airport to the city itself, you know that you need to take BART. BART is the metro system of the area. It's a metro like any other, you have to buy a card, but purchasing this card for the first time costs $20. But I was like, this is $20 of the $70 that this guy barely has, plus who knows what other stuff he has to do, you know, buy food, who knows. And so I ended up giving him 20 bucks to buy a BART card and get into the city. I mean, at the end, all I really could do was wish him good luck and see him on his way because my mom had arrived at the airport and it was time for me to head out. But by the time I got home, his fiance had added me back on WeChat, his dad had emailed me back. I ended up updating them both on his situation, that he was safe and that he was fine back in the States because really they had no way of knowing any of this information because Connor had no way of contacting them. This is one of those situations where I kept thinking to myself, I'm so glad that I learned how to speak Chinese because his fiance didn't speak English very well and so it was more useful for me to talk to her in Mandarin and explain the situation than it was to talk in English and try and use simple words and things like that. A few days later, I ended up getting a call from a random Texas number and I was like, I'm not gonna answer this robo call. I'm not trying to get my identity stolen. But you know, whatever, I decided to tempt fate and I answered it. Turns out it was Connor calling me from Texas to say thank you for helping him so much and that he ended up getting to Texas safely and that he was with his family. You know, the whole surprisedness of the situation aside, I think this goes to show that just a little bit of kindness from one person can have a huge impact on the life of another person. And I'm not gonna sit here and say like, oh, it's because of me that he was able to be safe. And oh, it was because of me that he got to Texas. No, I'm sure that if I hadn't been there to help him, he would have found his own way to do things. I mean, of course, he's a functioning adult. But when Connor called me on the phone, he was extremely grateful that I had helped him and made it a lot easier for him to access those things. And for me, I was just happy to help someone that needed it and that he didn't have to sleep on the street or that he was able to have a hot meal in the morning. That was enough for me. I really miss Oliver. I know it's only been a week, but I'm a little bit scared that's gonna be another year before we get to see each other again. I really hope not. I really hope I'm just here for a few weeks for a vacation, but missing Oliver aside, I'm really enjoying being back home and being with my family and being in California. So we'll see how the next few weeks goes and then if I end up making it back to China or stay here. We'll see. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. See you later.